what are your strategic options as a business owner? Hi, I'm John Taylor, investment banker, founder of Staten Park Capital, best-selling author of Maximize Your Multiple, The Business Owner's Guide to the Institutional Money Deal. So what are your strategic options as a business owner? What are sort of your uh, transaction or, or trend ownership transition possibilities as a business owner? Um, you know, I think in a lot of ways you could look at this as, as sort of a, a career or, or long-term goals question, right? So uh, just a personal story. I remember I, I graduated from uh, college in the, in the late 90s, and this was right around the time of the dot-com. And my initial job was in finance, uh, which is what I studied as an undergraduate in a, in a business program. Uh, but at the same time, there are all these dot-com companies going public. I, you know, I don't know if, if you're around in the, you know, we're working in the late 90s, but it was an interesting time with tech company, you know, pets.com. You know, obviously that there were like the Amazons of the world, but there was kind of more frivolous business models out there and people becoming internet millionaires overnight. So there it was, it was a very seductive, you know, powerful idea with people going and going to, to joining startups. And I uh, was admit was was seduced by, by this possibility and ended up joining a, a dot com startup. Uh, was was rather short lived and and found myself back in, in the banking world, um, you know, just just a few months afterwards. But um, that, that was an interesting period for sure. Um, you know, I think a lot of people were kind of in and out out of some of these startup companies for some period of time. But I think in the same vein, when you look at your strategic options as a business owner, you have to think about what what are the, the, the possibilities and the probabilities around, you know, what, what, what is it you want to achieve, right? What are your financial goals? Um, basically, there are seven different strategic options a business owner has, and I'll just list them quickly. So you could do a financial sale, uh, majority financial sale, strategic sale to a strategic buyer, um, minority sale uh, to typically financial or, or private equity buyer. Um, you can do you can go public either via IPO or re reverse merger into a SPAC, which is a special purpose acquisition corporation. Um, you could do an employee stock ownership plan. You can do an internal sale or or a buy sell agreement with among existing shareholders or partners. Or you could just go status quo, just continue to operate the business as is for some period of time and maybe look at some type of uh, transition or transaction in the future. So first, um, strategic sale. So t typically those are 100% or, or majority deals. I mean, they could be structured different ways, but this means you're selling your company to somebody in your industry. It could be a competitor or a consolidator, um, uh, usually a larger company than, than yours, but someone that's operating in your own industry currently and they're looking to buy a business like yours to add customers or products or additional capabilities, geographies, right? Um, so, so those are quite common. It could be a public or a privately held strategic buyer. Next is a financial sale to a private, private equity firm. So typically that's going to be a majority sale. Not usually 100%. I mean, in some cases it could be, but typically it's a majority sale. So they're going to expect the existing ownership team to, to roll some equity into the new deal and become usually minority shareholders. So private equity firm is going to buy anywhere from 51% to say 80% of, of the company, right? And they're going to expect some rollover among the existing shareholders. Um, and then, so typically that'll be for say three, five or seven year time frame, And then they'll be looking at selling that fund. will be looking to sell that ownership stake in, in your, whatever your stake you rolled could sell on that second sale down the road. Right. Um, next is a minority sale. So these are, there's not as many firms out there that do minority sales. I mean, most private equity firms are control oriented and, and don't do minority deals, but there are some that do, there are some hedge funds, family offices, other types of investors that do minority deals. Um, so next we could talk about employee stock ownership plans. Th th these are quite popular with some groups. A lot of business owners like the idea of giving the business to employees and selling it to them through an ESOP plan. The way an ESOP works is an entity gets set up, which is the ESOP. There's a trustee get, gets put in place and a bank will lend money to the ESOP which buys the shares of the company. And it could be a minority sale or a majority sale. Um, you know, it could, could transition over time. But there are a lot of great tax benefits to ESOPs because both the principal and interest payments are, are tax deductible to, to the ESOP and, and the sale shares. The, the proceeds that get rolled over to the, the, the seller um, can be tax deferred if they're 
reinvested in a U.S. security within a year, a 12-month time period after the sale. So that there are a lot of good benefits there. And also, there's some studies that suggest that employee-owned businesses are, um, that there's a lot of benefits to that. They're, they're better run. You get people ownership of the company. They feel more invested in it. Um, next is an internal sale or, or, you know, so usually this could be a sale to, if, if a business owner has children in the business and their goal is to sell to the next generation, um, either, um, on some, you know, tax deferred or low cost basis. I mean, that, that, that sometimes is done if, you know, if you have kids that w w want to own the business and be involved going forward. I mean, there are some, you know, multi-generation businesses out there that continue to, to perform and do well. And then, um, let's see, I, going public through IPO or SPAC reverse merger, um, you know, usually th those tend to be more sizable companies that do that, but um, th there are benefits to being publicly traded, that the stock gets more liquid and marketable than, than private company shares. It could be easier to make acquisitions. You could have access to, to greater financing. So some people just like the idea of being, being a publicly traded business so that that's an option there for some companies. And then lastly, status quo, right? So just continue to operate the business as is and, and uh, look at some liquidity event or transition plan in the future. So, um, you know, those are all, uh, you know, th those are kind of the main types of, of strategic options businesses have. And, and people, you know, once, once they kind of think through the different options, they, they, they get a sense of what, what might be the best fit for them. But also, you have to consider what, what, what not only the, the possibilities, but, but what's the probabilities that that particular option will get you the kind of result you're, you're desiring, right? Because there are size requirements, criteria for certain businesses to, to, meet, some of these, uh, to meet some of these options, particularly if you're selling to, say, a private equity firm or going public. Um, you know, even being an ESOP, typically you need to have a million dollars in profits in the business to be large enough to do to do an ESOP deal or at least get a, get a bank loan for, for an ESOP transaction. So I, I hope this is helpful. Um, again, check out my book, Maximize Your Multiple, The Business Owner's Guide to the Institutional Money Deal. Check out the links in the description below. Thank you very much.